This is a humdinger on Clay Thompson and his future. We love Marcus Thompson. He is a part of the triumvirate along with Tim Kawakami and Slates. Anthony Slater, all with The Athletic, and they do the Warriors Plus Minus podcast. And we thought there was some very, very interesting stuff that got said on the most recent episode. Let's start with what Marcus Thompson said with regard to Clay Thompson's future. His situation remains very unsettled behind the scenes. Like, I mean, I wrote about it last week. I, I, it's gonna depend, I don't think it looks good on. for him coming back. I, I think he's going to get a bunch of money thrown at him. And I know it's crazy. Shorter people term deal, like that. people. Balloon yeah, I know. Oh no, you no man. Teams are out here desperate. They need. We watched four teams in the playoffs could not score. <laughs> they just could not score. And here's a higher yeah. gun. I think somebody's gonna offer him a bunch of money. Then Clay's got to decide: Do I take the money or do I? And what that number yeah, is? Yeah. Is it gonna? Are they offering him thirty? I, or are they I offering think he him... can get it. I think he can get it. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Marcus Thompson, Anthony Slater, Tim Kawakami. If you want people who are dialed in and locked in with the Golden State Warriors, you're not going to come up with a much, much better group of voices with regard to what's going on behind the scenes. If Marcus Thompson is ready on June 7th to publicly say into a microphone, I don't think it looks very good that Clay Thompson's coming back. I'd argue it doesn't look very good that he's that, coming that back. Clay Thompson's going to come back. Agreed. And you and I have both, you quicker than me, have kind of gotten to the point where it is feeling much less than 50-50. Yeah, it's feeling more to me like 20-80 that he comes back. 20% chance he comes back, 80 that he's gone. And actually, it might be lower than that because look at all the tea leaves, as you like to say, the breadcrumbs mm -hmm. that are in place. And the Warriors have been pretty clear about wanting to make a big move, make a big swing, and you can't make a big swing and still sign Clay Thompson early in the free agency period. So it feels like if Clay came back, it would be toward the tail end of free agency, which means Clay would have to have had a couple of offers already out there from other teams and said no and just waited and agreed to take less to stay. I don't really see that being the way that, that, that this goes. Is there a possibility that there's more than meets the eye that's going on here? Could I think be. largely this conversation has been centered on what? Well, Clay's going to want his money, yeah, and the Warriors want to make a splash, and the Warriors are up against it. So the Warriors, so we're like breaking it down based on, and this is what we do, and I get it. We break it down based on sort of like what we would do if we were in the, the what we would do if we were the Warriors, what we would do if we were Clay Thompson, right? Oh, I'd stay. Like it's worth. I'll I'd take less. I've made two hundred million in my career. You know all, all that stuff. And the Warriors, how do you allocate the funds? What would you do if you were the Warriors? That's largely the centerpiece of our of our conversation. What if there's a lot more going on here? I'm going to take you back to the com most recent conversation we had on this show with Ramona Shelburne. And remember what Ramona told us? Negotiations with Clay Thompson may be less about money and more about the plan. What is your plan for Clay Thompson, pitch me on the idea that you have for the remainder of my career so that I am both acknowledged as the future Hall of Famer that I am, um, but if you want to, for instance, move me to the bench, okay, let's talk about it. How do you see doing this while you're still highlighting me as you lowlight me? Difficult conversation to have, and maybe that is a window into some things that are going on behind the scenes because we invite you to listen to this conversation. This is largely Kawakami and Slater talking about things that have upset Clay Thompson within the organization in recent times. It's fair if Clay's well, like... He was, pissed, he was pissed at him at the end of the season. There's no question. He yeah. was pissed at them at the end of the season. And, and, and by the way, not you. very happy with upper management's dealing oh, of, with no his question. extension no, talks. It's, it's just the whole thing. Or non-dealing, I should say. Yeah, almost. it's the whole thing. And I think he takes he took offense when Draymond, not at Draymond, but that Draymond said, hey, look, if they signed him to a four-year, $180 million deal when he would tore his ACL. And, you know, Clay didn't love that. And it's like, hey, what, what are they going to do? do? What were they yeah, going to do? You think? Can I you imagine I mean, if they did that was, that was probably his most, like, he had a very interesting <laughs> exit interview for several <laughs> reasons, but that was probably the answer yeah, that was he, most, like, revealing. He had that People Bob should go back Fitzgerald and listen to it if they want. Just laugh, like, 
Can you yeah, like, oh yeah, what? Can you, you know, I just uh, you know <laughs> tore my ACL trying to win my you know fourth title. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, and he's right. It just was a very yes. interesting yeah, moment. And that Draymond's the one who brought up. No one said, "Hey, Draymond, the fact that they gave Clay all this money after he tore ACL." No, like Draymond brought it up himself. So um, interesting stuff. And again, I, I I've heard it's not as pissy right now. It doesn't mean they're going to do a deal. I just think they've had some if time. Understanding. They've had time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just he was pissed. Like, yeah. Clay was pissed. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, use the word pissy. It's a little and, awkward. And then and then use the word pissed. Yeah, twice. Yeah, and Anthony and, Slater and, talking about his exit interview yeah. and being one of the more interesting ones. And I get it that Clay at the end of the year, I'm sure he was mad, frustrated with the year he had, frustrated with the organization. Not thrilled with having to come off the bench and then back in the lineup and then back in the bench. And this is not the way that you would feel like it should go if you're a splash brother of that of that level. Breadcrumbs. You right. just brought it up. Let's yeah. look. Now, now go back to Michael Thompson joining our show. Oh, we don't we don't talk about the future. I have no idea. Yeah. I have <laughs> we don't talk about the business we, side. We, of it. we don't even discuss that. That comes, of course, six months after him going on Twitter. Clay's always gonna be a dub. He's a dub, he's always gonna be a dub. Six months later, we don't talk about business. Breadcrumbs. How about this? And we talked about this too. I think you could see what these guys are talking about all over his face all year long. I just didn't know what it was about. I can remember doing the show where I was just sort of, I almost lost it. I'm like, why are you so mad all the time? Right, right. And if you're not, you should know that you look mad all the time. Clay looked mad all the time. And we were left to guess what it was all about. Is it about a bench roll? Is it about his own body? Is it about two years, forty-eight million? What is it about? All is, the above. Is I it about bet. Devin yeah. Booker is like better than you now? Like what? What is happening? You look mad all the time. And what I fell in love with with this version of Warrior basketball is the joy, the joy with which they played. And I didn't see that last year. And my gosh, I think the standings saw. That they weren't playing with joy either. They were, they were at least in his case, and sometimes Draymond. They were playing with bubbling anger. It is nowhere near as fun to watch. It appears to be nowhere near as effective. And maybe now we get a little bit of a further window into some of the things that it was about. I'm not saying it wasn't about the contract or the body or or any of that stuff. It probably was those things, but it's also it's also this. It's also. Draymond publicly bringing up how about giving the Warriors some credit for paying an injured player and Clay's like ah, can you imagine them not right like, and, and how about keep my contract out your mouth exactly I mean this is really interesting the, 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 to, to me this is incredibly interesting stuff and I do think that it's all of the above it's the contract that came the reported contract that was offered early last year that he probably thought was a little insulting a two year 48 million dollar deal and he's making 42 and so now you want me to make 24 over the course of two years after all I've done for this franchise disrespectful it was the fact that he was searching it for the first half of the year he was struggling trying to find his way and he did play with a little bit more anger, and he had to come off the bench. And so his role changes. The contract was not what he thought it would be. I do think that it's all the above. And so now you get into the offseason, and you had a disappointing year as an individual and as a team. Your year ended with an embarrassing play-in game yep. where you didn't even hit one basket. You scored zero baskets, and now you have a chance to be a free agent. I think absolutely he's looking forward to seeing what's out there. Oh, I and mean, if there's an offer that's out there that is better than what he thinks the Warriors will come back with, I'm I'm sure the Warriors and Clay have talked privately about you know what what they're thinking financially, role, all those things that you had just laid out. I would imagine that they've already had those conversations. Mm. I don't think that you know. I'm pretty sure that Clay knows 
what the the team thinks of him. Yeah, but and where do, they do, want to slot him in if but, they want to keep him. But didn't you get the sense from the Slater article about a week and a half ago that Clay Thompson, his whole situation is not priority one. Right. It's like you got to wait. You got to wait and find out what else we can do well, first. There's information in that statement. Correct. And I and I do think that you know the team and Clay have had that conversation to where. Clay knows that he's not priority one, and so you go out into free agency, and you want to be somebody's priority one. 